week's Pilch Point with Abram Pilch is proudly powered by Pure VPN. The best way to protect your privacy online is with Pure VPN. You can hide your online activities, say goodbye to regional restrictions, and improve your streaming quality. Plus, it's available for almost all your devices, and you can get a special price right now by going to pilchpoint.live slash pure VPN. tell you i was recently using that uh that uh like remote capability feature that we've talked about <laughs> um to and don't listen uh bbc but definitely used it to trick the bbc into thinking i was in manchester to watch stuff on channel four so <laughs> that would actually be that would actually be real helpful to me because my daughter now is really my two-year-old is really into the show that is on the BBC iPlayer called Jojo and Grand Grand. Okay. It is on, they play it on Nick Jr., which she watches, but online, it's not on, on, on Paramount Plus, which carries Nick Jr. content. Gotcha. It's only on BBC iPlayer. So if you want to watch it online, you, you can't. So in, gotcha. in the US, anyway. Well, I'm going to well, give our... I found some clips on YouTube. I'm going to give our yeah. listeners and viewers a little bit of a trick with Pure VPN. If you if you go to our link and scroll down and select two years and then move your mouse up like you're going to close the tab, they'll give you an even better price. Just putting that out there, um, that's a little bit of a trick from the website in case you're curious. I've been subscribed for a while, but I test that every once in a while, and it absolutely works. And uh, I will tell you that I was testing it on... Uh, the my main computer in my office, which is running Windows 11, which we're going to talk a little bit more about since it's officially out. Yes. Yes. So welcome to the age of Windows 11, because as of October 5th, uh, as of October 5th, you can now, Windows 11 is an official operating system. Now, if you've been following along, uh, either with our show or just with the news in general, you know that people have been able to use Windows 11 as a uh, beta product. If you were in the Windows Insider program, anyone could get it since June. But it is now, if you've been holding out, it is now officially official. It is final. However, that does not mean that everybody who has an eligible uh, PC and eligible. We'll get into that in one second. Uh, can update right? Can automatically update right now, or will be offered an update right now because Microsoft is rolling it out over a period of months, and has said that some folks won't get the offer to upgrade until you know until 2022. Now, there's a way around that where you can get it today, and I'll and I'll talk about that. In a second. First of all, what do you let's talk about what you need to run Windows 11, and then let's talk about whether you should run Windows 11. So, first of all, what you need to run Windows 11, you need at least you need a, a dual core CPU that supports TPM 2.0 security, which mm -hmm. realistically means because they have a list of supported CPUs, you need an Intel 8th gen CPU or newer, or an AMD Ryzen. Uh, 2000 series CPU or newer. You need a, you need at least, you need at least, I think, eight gigs of RAM or the four gigs. You need at least four gigs of RAM, 64 gig of storage. Uh, and the CPU requirement is, I think, the tougher one, the tougher one to meet. So if you meet all those requirements, uh, and if you're not sure, there's a PC Health Check app you can run. Uh, but if you meet all those requirements, you can look in your Windows 10 settings right now, and it will probably tell you, hey, you're eligible for the upgrade. And it may or may not say you can download the upgrade right now, or you have to wait. You do not have to wait if you really want Windows 11. There is something called the Windows Upgrade Assistant, Update Assistant, that you can download from Microsoft.com, run that, and it will force an update right away, provided that your system meets all the requirements. But let's get to the heart of the matter. Should you even bother? Should you do it? So let's take it for those who haven't been keeping up. Let's take a quick look and I will share my screen 
and you can see what uh, what Windows 11 looks like. So this is the default screen for Windows 11. Uh, this stuff on top is because I'm running this in a virtual a virtual machine. That means uh, it is running on top of my regular Windows, so I can show it to you without uh, without interfering with my regular computer. And obviously, you notice that it has the taskbar here, the start centered. You have the start menu uh, here, which does not have live tiles anymore. Got to click through for, to see all your apps. Um, besides that, we have context menus that have been shortened. And if you want to see all of the options, you got to right click and see view more options. You have a widget. You have multiple desktops as you had before in Windows 10. You have this widget module, which allows you to kind of, it's basically the homepage of MSN. Um, you have the Microsoft Store, which has been given a sort of fresh coat of paint, um, which may or may not load as I'm trying to show it to you, but it's the Microsoft Store, nothing too exciting. You have uh, windows look a little bit different. They're a little more rounded and you have this, these snap options, which are kind of neat to help you kind of figure out, oh, I want this layout, I want that layout. Of course, this all this all is assuming you've got multiple windows open. Uh, it handles multiple windows and desktops a lot better than it used to, because if you're connected to an external monitor, let's say on a laptop, and then you disconnect, instead of uh, just automatically moving your windows over and, and opening them on the having to take a space on the, on the laptop screen, it will leave them minimized until you reconnect again or move them. So it handles some of that stuff better, but it does some things a lot worse. Uh, first of all, you have a lot less control over the taskbar. You cannot move it. I mean, there's hacks that I can talk about that will let you move it, but officially you cannot move this. You cannot resize it. Uh, what you can do is you can make the icons align to the left uh, if you want officially, you know, with the settings menu. You can do that. I can go to taskbar behaviors and I can set it to left. But uh, you cannot uh, ungroup the icon. So if you want to have, let's say you've got multiple windows open uh, in previous windows, you could say, oh, yeah, I'm going to make sure that each of these has its own icon. Can't do it. Um, the so you can't easily there's just not as much control and customization over a lot of things that you had control over custom and customization over uh, i also personally hate the start the, the i'm sorry the search menu uh on windows 10 you had it in the bar here you gotta i mean i guess it's effectively the same number of clicks but you gotta you gotta click to to see it um the start menu takes up more space, but actually seems to have less on it without you clicking. So there's pluses and minuses. And then and then it's time to talk performance. So there have been a couple of stories that have come out about, about Windows 10, Windows 11 performance. And one of them from one of them, AMD themselves said. We have to issue a patch later this month because we've seen performance slowdowns in Windows 11 on our processors and pretty much all of their modern day processors, even, even you know, first gen rise and second, all, almost all of the processors anyone would have from AMD, uh, slowdowns of up to 15%. And that wow. is, so that, so that's pretty bad if you're on AMD. Another thing that has come out is that is that our colleagues at PC Gamer wrote a story where they said, holy cow, Microsoft's new security security setting, uh, which is known as HVCI or uh, memory isolation, can slow down gaming up to 25%. Now, there we did our own study at Tom's Hardware and we actually found it to be more like five to 7%. Uh, there, they tested with an older generation processor. And let's also keep in mind that memory isolation 
is not on by default. So the the it's a little bit of an overhyped problem. It will slow the way that memory isolation and uh, ultimately it's part of something called VBS virtualization based security uh, works is that it it makes sure that there's this kind of a secure enclave in your memory that not all apps can can access. So so as to protect some of your data, if, if protect even if you got malware, it couldn't reach it couldn't reach into that part of your memory. So the while Microsoft is recommending that OEMs turn VBS and you know memory isolation on by default on some system on some systems that qualify for it and by qualify for it we mean those with like the latest 11th gen processor or latest ryzen the very latest it's still you can it's still a lot of uh oems are not going to turn it on we've talked to some including msi who told us that they're not going to turn it on because it does have a performance impact so that one might be a little bit overhyped we have a story on how to tell if you have VPS enabled, which you probably don't, and disable it if you wish. But the the AMD thing is is really unfortunate. And I guess I come back to this. You do not have to upgrade to Windows 11. There is not a really compelling reason to upgrade to Windows 11. The, the best features that have been talked about, there are mostly UI features, which you can love or hate. Personally, I don't like them. I don't like the less control over your taskbar, a bigger start menu that's more in your face with less information on it, and and context menus that make you click twice to see the same information that you saw with one click in previous versions of Windows. Now, granted, uh, visit our site if you do want to run Windows 11 because of Tom's hard because on Tom's hardware we have stories about how to use registry hacks to get your start to get your context menu back uh, to be a full context menu to or to change the taskbar out so that you can do some more things with it, like ungroup, to um, to move it to the top of the screen, to change your start menu. So there are hacks, but if all you've got going for you is I'm going to hack this stuff so I get it to be more like the operating system I upgraded from, that's not very appealing. <laughs> Some of the, the, uh, I mean, the highly, the, the best new feature is this snap. Then my view is the snap feature. And honestly, it's not like you couldn't snap before. Uh, the highly touted ability to run Android apps in windows is not there. So, and windows 10 is going to continue to receive support and updates till at least 2025. So there's not a really great compelling reason to upgrade to Windows 11, unless you really like the look of the new start menu. And I guess I can say to, to each their own, uh, we certainly have a lot of advice on Tom Hardware for people who want to do the upgrade. Uh, but for people asking me, should you upgrade or not? My answer is, unless you really like the look, don't bother. Yeah. And, you know, we, we talked in previous episodes about, you know, the, some of the issues with with the appearance, particularly the start menu. And it's, uh, I don't like the fact that I can't, that you can turn off the suggested documents or whatever that section's called, but you don't gain that space back. <laughs> yeah, rec still, the, recommended, the recommended space. Yeah, you can turn that feature off, but you don't get that space back. It will continue to be dead space with a, hey, did you know you turned this off? <laughs> yeah, they they want you to use it's it's you know the other thing is I just find the whole widgets thing completely useless. So they have that widgets menu mm -hmm. that I showed, what that's just basically the homepage of MSN that flies out that flies out at you. Okay. By the way, if you change oh one thing I didn't mention, it's more difficult to change your default browser in Windows 11. Than yeah, uh, we have a story on how to do it though. It's not that difficult. Uh, and and a coach point episode on how to do it. <laughs> Yes, that's right. We talked about it. Um, so yeah, it, we've been getting a we've been getting a lot of traffic on that this week. <laughs> yes, yes. So, I mean, look, people are there. Are people who are going to want to have the latest and greatest. As someone who works in this industry and has to keep up, uh, I'm running it on my laptop and not my desktop. 
uh, and I'm running it in a virtual machine so I can do my research on it tutorials mm -hmm. on my desktop. And eventually I will have to switch because I got to keep up with, with, I got to keep up with, with what the latest is so I can be aware of what's going on. But for everyone else who just wants to use their computer, uh, there's not really a great compelling argument to be, to be upgraded. Yeah. And, and I, I will concur with that. I've got, you know, obviously everybody knows we've got tons of computers around here and only one of them's running it. And that's because I had to have something running it <laughs> to be able but, to you know, talk about it. Microsoft's Microsoft probably doesn't care that much about the upgrades, to be honest. I think they're much more concerned about this is a way for OEMs to kind of push new PCs. Yeah. So at a certain point, very soon, probably every new laptop that you buy or desktop that you buy will have 11, not 10. Yeah, probably. Um, I mean, I, while, while watching uh, content on the BBC, I, I definitely saw commercials for their electronics retailers that were all showing laptops running Windows 11 and talking about it pretty hard. So they're already pushing it hard. Yep. So, I don't know. Uh, but like you said, if, if you, people are really interested in it, you guys have a lot of, yes, a lot we of support have like information. Dozens and dozens of articles on Windows 11 on TomsHardware.com. Come check us out. We have a review of it. We have how to upgrade now. We have how to avoid the TPM requirements. You can get around those requirements, although you won't necessarily get an update get updates after that so mm. that's purely experimental but uh if you want to know how to do something in windows 11 there's a very good especially get around some of its annoyances uh right now i'm actually working on an article that sums up some of the stuff called the 11 worst features of windows 11 and how to and how to fix them uh so a lot of things that i just named are on the list uh but beyond that uh we have it all we have a lot of windows 11 so come check us out at Tom's Hardware. Very good. Well, as always, Abram, I appreciate it, and I look forward to what we talk about next. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pilch Point with Avram Pilch. Uh, if you did. Please subscribe to our channel and, of course, hit the notification bell since subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, and if you've got topics you'd like us to discuss in the future, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, if you don't want to follow us on YouTube, that's okay. There's a lot of other ways that you can follow our content. You can find all of that by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all the different ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.